Hey, hey, what's up everybody? It's Rutek, and today we'll be talking about the best budget $500 gaming PC using AMD's new Ryzen 3 3100. There's a lot of hype surrounding this processor and it's due for its release on pretty much every single website very soon. So it would be wise for y'all to have a build in mind using this new processor. Now, I don't wanna waste too much time. We have a lot to discuss. So before we get straight into it, I would really appreciate it. If you checked out my channel, I post PC tech videos among other things. Also, have any comments or questions as the video goes along, be sure to drop a comment. If you like the video, drop a like. And if you enjoy the content that you're seeing, drop a sub. It really helps out the channel. Now, this is a Windows-based machine. So if you head over to digitalchillmark.com, you can get some pretty cheap keys ranging from 20 to $25. The link will be in the description. Use coupon code RUTEK to get 5% off. All right, next up, let's talk about the CPU. As I mentioned, we are using AMD's brand new Ryzen 3 3100. This is the new budget king as it is quad core, has eight threads, is fully overclockable with the base clock of 3.6 gigahertz and a boost clock of 3.9 gigahertz. This processor has the all new seven nanometer Zen 2 architecture. So you'll be getting top of the line performance. It also comes with AMD's good old Wraith Stealth Cooler, which will keep the CPU at perfectly safe temperatures as long as you're not overclocking it like crazy. Now on the topic of how the CPU will perform in everyday life, normal browsing around and file transfers will be a breeze for this thing, no question. Now for gaming, this processor delivers as well as it has four cores and eight threads, which will be fine for the graphics card I selected for this build. Now when it comes to overclocking, I've heard a ton of crazy stories about overclocking this processor. I've even heard someone went as far as overclocking it to six gigahertz. And if you're new to overclocking, pretty much that is an absurd number, especially with a budget processor. Now for the motherboard, I made sure to select one that is capable of overclocking. So you won't have to worry about that. So speaking of the motherboard, we are using Gigabyte's B450 AORUS Micro ATX motherboard. I selected this motherboard for a few reasons. Of course, the main one would have to be that it is compatible with third generation Ryzen processors. So you shouldn't run into any BIOS troubles when setting up the PC. From my understanding and based off of the comments I received, most of my viewers are new to PC building. So I don't want you guys to have to deal with any BIOS upgrade stuff. So with this motherboard, you won't have to. It has four RAM slots and a max RAM capacity of 64 gigabytes, which I assure you, you probably really won't need if you're only gaming and a max RAM speed of 3200 megahertz, which is the sweet spot for the processor that we're using. Overall, a solid motherboard. I like Gigabyte and their products and I've never really had any issues with them. So you'll be able to count on this motherboard. Following that, we have the RAM. We are going to use Team T-Force's Vulcan 16 gigabyte, so two sticks of eight gigabyte, 3200 megahertz memory. 16 gigabytes of RAM is easily enough for all modern games. For reference, Modern Warfare only recommends 12 gigabytes and up for smooth gameplay. With 16 gigs, you won't have to worry about ever upgrading your RAM for a few years unless you edit videos or do 3D designing or modeling with high resolution textures. But if you ever decide to upgrade, it's not a problem at all. The motherboard we chose is for RAM slots with a max capacity of 64 gigabytes. Either way, T-Force's Vulcan RAM is some solid stuff and won't give you any problems. Continuing down the list, we have the storage. I chose two different storage devices, a hard drive and an SSD to get the best of both worlds, being performance and capacity. For the performance side of things, I chose the Team MS30 128GB N.2 SSD. This is where you'll want to store Windows, period, end of story. Putting Windows on an SSD over a hard drive will make your computer run significantly faster, especially when you're booting up. So when you're installing Windows using that key you hopefully bought from digitalchillmark.com, links in the description, use coupon code RUTEK for 5% off, make sure it gets installed on the SSD. Now for the capacity part, we're using Western Digital's 500 gigabyte Caviar Blue 7200 RPM hard drive. Obviously you won't be able to download a lot of games unless you have enough storage. So I decided to go with this all reliable hard drive. For hard drives, I always use Western Digital Caviar Blue because their price to capacity ratio is phenomenal and they're very reliable. Reliable. Every build I've made has used a WD Caviar Blue hard drive and I've never run into any problems with them. So in total, you will have roughly 610 gigabytes left over after the Windows installation, so you can download a ton of games. And if that's not enough, you can always just get a different higher capacity hard drive or SSD or just grab another one down the road. Now for the part you've probably been waiting for, the video card. We're using the AMD RX 570 with eight gigabytes of VRAM from XFX. The 570 is a phenomenal, highly regarded graphics card for its performance and 1080p 60 frames per second gaming. Most would say that the 580 is the true 1080p king, but the 570 seriously isn't very far behind it at all. Before we talk about how this graphics card will handle specific games, let's run down some of its specs. 
has a base clock of 1168 MHz, boost clock of 1286 MHz, which can most likely be overclocked, has 8GB of VRAM, which is more than enough, and is crossfire capable. So, let's talk about how the RX 570 will run on the following games. Modern Warfare Multiplayer Warzone, Fortnite, Valorant, and CSGO. I chose these games because these are what a lot of my subscribers play, but if you have a suggestion for a game I should mention in my next build, drop a comment below. So, here are the performance ratings for Modern Warfare. These are some pretty great numbers. As you can see, if you play on low, you get a fantastic average frame rate above 100 frames per second, and playing on Ultra will also keep you at a consistent frame rate above 60. It's already looking really good for the 570. Now for Fortnite, it's even better. You get competitive frame rates as long as you play in competitive settings. From my knowledge, most people play this game on low to medium settings since this is a very competitive game, which gives the edge to people playing on higher frame rate. Now don't let the Ultra frame rates scare you off. Fortnite shaders are just very demanding. But regardless of that, it's still playable 60 frames per second, 1080p, it gets an average of above 60 frames per second. Now for Valorant. Valorant is a low demanding title, so this shouldn't come as a surprise that the 570 can run it with such good markings, whether on high or low settings. The main point about these benchmarks is that it'll consistently stay above roughly 110 frames per second, with an average of between 170 and 180 frames. Finally for CSGO, looking down the whole list, it looks very good. You will always have an average of above 144 frames per second, which is a very competitive frame rate, so nothing to worry about when playing CSGO. Up next, the case that'll hold everything. We are using the Deepcool Matrix 30. This is a pretty standard issue case, quote unquote, as it is cheap and looks pretty basic. The reason I chose this one over the others is because of its nice, full, tempered glass side panel. Now, you do not need to use this case. In most cases, pun not intended, you should be able to use any case that you want. All you need to make sure of is that the case of your choice is labeled MATX or ATX. This is very important. But if you want to use a deep cool Matrix 30, it's a solid case and I have a deep cool case myself and it's very reliable. Finally, the power supply. We are using EVGA's 450 watt 80 plus bronze certified power supply. 450 watts will be enough to deliver enough power to our computer with room for upgrading. It also has black cables with no ugly yellow or red wires visible, so it also checks off in the aesthetics side of things. EVGA is probably the most reliable power supply brand out there, at least from my experience, and I tend to find that people are most iffy about which power supply they buy, so I assure you that this is a fantastic power supply. So yeah, that'll do it for this build guys. If you plan on building this or build this, be sure to drop a comment below. I'm sure a lot of people wanna hear your experience with this PC. Or if you have any questions about the PC, let me know below. I will try to get back to you as soon as possible. So yeah, that'll do it for this video guys. If you like the video, drop a like. And if you like the content you're seeing, drop a sub. Really, really helps out the channel. Thanks for watching. Peace out.